Oh my god, little Bibby, are you struggling with your general relativity? Oh, don't worry, we have a little baby book for general relativity. Yeah, see, we open it up. <gasps> More mass, less mass. And then this, this is a flat space, right? Oh, but then we open up to the next page. <gasps> mass warps space it makes it change so the more the mass the more the change the less the mass the less the change less mass less warp so it's like it's like i think it was carl sagan that said it where basically you take a paper towel and then you put a ball in it and then the bigger the ball the more it indents that's space then more mass more warp and then this is a small particle right there. That's a particle. It wants to go there, right? But it can't. Oh no. Why can't it go? Why can't it go right there? Because it's like when you're having a paper towel, right? And it's flat and then you put a ball on the middle and then it makes it indent. When you try to go from here to there, it's going to make it roll. So it's not going to be able to go into a straight line that's going to roll downwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it be. That's science. Then, mass drags space. It moves it around. It kind of just pulls it. It's like a tractor beam. Space drags mass. Space drags... Oh, it's an interconnected sort of wall. So it's like a dance between space and mass. That's crazy. This is a flat space from a different angle. So as you can see, it's a flat space, but from a different angle. So you're basically looking at this flat space from an angle that is different than the one prior. See, mass warps space from this angle. So like from this angle, it's going downwards. You can see a little bit more of like that paper towel where it's like the ball goes in. Shrink a large mass enough and it becomes a black hole. <sighs> When it goes into a black hole, it really starts to suction cup everything inside of it. A black hole is a large amount of mass in a relatively small area. Yeah. Yeah, it is. A black hole has so much mass that not even light can escape its warp. So it's like, if someone were to put a flashlight, if you were to go into a black hole and you were to light a flashlight, not even the light particles of the flashlight could escape outside of the black hole because it would be absorbed inside the mass. The center of a black hole is called a singularity. A singularity, because it's the center of one singular. Center of a black hole. Puts you right there. Two black holes can spin around each other you spin me right round, baby, right round, like a black hole, like a black hole now. They send ripples through space called gravitational waves. Wow. This looks like a skateboarder logo. Gravitational wave. And then, and then this one goes. I see it. And then these waves stretch and squish space throughout the universe. Now, wait a minute. Oh my god, it's like a squishy ball. Now you know general relativity. Wasn't that so much fun to learn? Little baby, little little baby, have you have you ever polished up on your quantum physics? You've never polished up on your quantum physics? Let's brush up on your quantum physics. Quantum physics for babies. Little baby. This is a ball. This ball has energy. This is a ball. This ball has zero energy. No energy. All balls are made of atoms. Little tiny atoms. Which one? Neutron, proton, electron. 
The electrons are the ones that are over here, and the neutrons and the protons are the ones that are right here. Right? Yeah. I'm correct. I'm right. I knew it. I was correct. These are the neutrons, the purple ones. And the protons are also... I knew it. Protons are there, and then electrons are there. The floaty ones on the other side. Electrons are negative, protons are positive, and neutrons are neutral. An electron can be here, as close as that, or here, as close as that, or here, as close as that. But an electron cannot be here, not there. You know why? Because it's not on an orbit, it's not like on a line, it's not like on a cycle, it's not like on a transit. Or here, because then it's too close to the neutrons and protons, it'll throw it off base. I think something bad would happen if that would ever happen, but it's impossible for it to happen. It's impossible! All electrons have energy. This electron has the most energy. The one that's furthest out has the most energy. This electron has the least energy. The one that's closest to the neutrons and the protons has the least energy. There are no electrons with zero energy. Nope. All electrons have energy. No electrons exist without energy. This energy is quantized. Quantized. Quantized for quantum. And an electron can take energy like a vampire. An energy vampire. An electron can take energy to jump up. Wow. So an electron can take some energy to jump up the orbits, to jump up the cycles. Oh, that's interesting like it has a mind of its own, although it doesn't. And it must give energy. So, as it receives, it must give. So electrons receive energy, jump, they move according to the energy given, but they also give energy. It's a cycle. Always receive and give. Always receive and give. And then that'll make them fall down. That's it. That's quantum physics. You're a genius now. You know general relativity and quantum physics. My goodness. Let's see. I think I know exactly what it is that we're going to learn next. I'm going to put this one over here. This is a ball. Ball. It's the shape of the planet Earth. It's in the shape of the planet Earth. Third planet from the sun. The sun is also shaped like a ball, but it's much bigger. It is. It's much bigger. Ball. But much bigger than the Earth. The Earth er orbits around the sun. You see this tiny little ball orbiting this big, big ball. Yeah. It's just what happens. The sun is a star that looks big because it is so close. Yeah. It's like the sun isn't like that big. I think it's like um red giant. I don't think it's a red giant, but I think it's a red giant where it's not like that that big. It's like on the third stage of being a star. But because it's so close to us, it's like it seems like it's like giant. And also good for tiny creatures. Other stars look tiny because they are so, so far away. But these are the big ones. These are the ones that have already died. Sorry. 
stars are heavy balls of hot gas. So, this is just like a ton of energy that is just like so super packed. Inside stars, atoms squeezed together. That's what causes the heat. I once asked my teacher if the reason someone gets burned is because of all of the atoms that are basically jumping around and that that energy is basically what causes the sensation of a burn. I forgot what they said. I completely forgot. Smaller atoms combine to make bigger atoms and a lot of energy. Smaller atoms combine to make bigger atoms and a lot of Smaller atoms combine to make bigger atoms. And a lot of energy. So that means all of these tiny little atoms have just basically come into a tiny little ball together. And they made a bigger atom, but it's made out of a lot of energy. That energy keeps stars hot and makes them shine brightly. That energy keeps stars bright and makes them shine brightly. was born, there were only a few of the simplest atoms. Hydrogen, helium, lithium. Hydrogen, helium, lithium. Hydrogen, helium, lithium. Don't wanna cut me up inside me. Now there are many kinds of atoms called elements. Most of these were made by stars. Nice. We will cover which of these atoms were created by the stars, because that's an interesting subject. Some elements were made by stars that were living. Some elements were made by stars that were living. Helium, carbon, nitrogen. And then some elements were made by stars that were dying. Silicon, nickel, calcium. That's interesting. <gasps> Nickels are made from dead stars. <gasps> huh? So are silicone implants. Wow. Dead stars with dead stars inside of them. That's tragic. Now that's an observation. Has that sentence been uttered before? Has that observation been made? I'm sure it has. I'm a thousand percent sure it has. Calcium is made from a dead star milk. Bones. And some were made when stars crashed into each other. Bismuth. I'm going to name my son Bismuth. Platinum. That's a strong middle name. Gold and uranium. Oh, wow. Uranium was made when stars crashed together. Huh. The very atoms inside your body were created by the stars. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. Living stars. Stars exploded, sending atoms out into space. Exploded, sending atoms out into space. Those atoms were around when the sun formed almost 5 billion years ago. Those atoms were around when the sun formed almost 5 billion years ago, oh, yeah. It's true. And when the earth formed around the same time, carbon. Those atoms were still on earth when you were born. Isn't carbon the most abundant element in the universe? The atoms of old stars live on in you. And now you know astrophysics. So we've covered general relativity, quantum physics, and now astrophysics. And we learned that silicon, calcium, and what was the other crazy? Nickel are from, are made from like a dying or dead star rather that's crazy nonetheless it's time for baby to go to sleep you've had such a big lesson today lessons to